Howdy! Today we're going to go through and have a brief seminar on how to rebuild Stallwilly ratchet inserts for Stallwilly torque wrenches. Now these inserts are traditionally very, very durable, but occasionally you'll have some issues. And what we're going to do is go through here quickly, uh, talk about how to identify the issues, and then how to rebuild the ratchet so uh, you know you get a long life out of the darn things. Um, Basically, what you're looking at in this ratchet is a pawl, spin this around, this pawl, which is hardened steel, and then inside the case is a uh, hardened steel key corresponding to the pawl, and these things are pretty darn indestructible, uh, really, they are. Uh, when you get these things in here and you see the pawls lined up, when you go to load it, it just is built to engage the housing key. It, it's just ridiculous how strong these things are. And nine times out of ten, if you're having any issues with these, it's because they're dirty. Uh, there is the one time out of ten where it tends to be operator error and you may be over pulling too fast. So you're pulling really, really fast. Ratchet, 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 and you get to the load point and the teeth the Paul teeth have not had a chance to engage the housing teeth here and you'll get some slip. And that, that traditionally only happens when you're working really, really fast. So first advice is when you're pulling, slow down when you get to your load point, give the teeth a chance to engage, then you can pull through and have the wrench, the torque wrench click properly and not have any issues with the, uh, with the insert head, okay? The other thing that tends to uh, be a problem um, is when folks rebuild these and don't do it properly, uh, you'll use, they'll use grease or uh, some other form of heavy lubricant that prevents the teeth from seating properly. You can actually cause, the grease can actually cause a hydro lock and it'll force the teeth of the wrench apart uh, inside the head. So you want, or the ratchet head, sorry, force the teeth of the uh, ratchet head apart. So you want to use nothing but a drop of 3-in-1 oil. This is the only recommended lubricant for these heads. So once we disassemble it, you'll see what we do. We throw in a drop of 3-in-1 and we're good to go. Things we need before we get started. Paper towels. 3-in-1 oil. And some sort of cleaning solution that is, does not leave a residue. We're pretty fond of the CRC Electromotive stuff because it dries absolutely dry and there's, out, and there's no residue left behind uh, and it cleans like crazy. You could use brake clean or carburetor cleaner, but something that's not gonna leave a residue is critical. And uh, you can use this stuff if you've got a lot of goop, dirt, uh, grease, or whatever inside the ratchet head. Okay, now that we've gone through all the preliminaries, let's get started on doing our ratchet rebuild. We're going to stick our T30 Torx into the top of our ratchet, hold the square drive, and you can also hold the uh, switching mechanism up here. We're just going to Remove this screw, okay? And remember, we're throwing this screw away because it's shot. When we put our new screw in, it's gonna have, you see the pink line on there, it's got some thread lock already applied on it from the factory. When we put this screw in, then we'll be secure in situations where you do not wanna lose the screw. So aerospace or any place where you could have a FOD or a foreign object uh, debris incident, you want to use this thread lock. If you're doing a field repair and you don't have replacement screws on, you're just going to clean this out and keep using it, then what you can do is uh, reuse the other, the original screw, but just make sure to put some Loctite or some sort of thread lock material on there so the, the screw doesn't back out. Okay, now we're going to disassemble. We take the top mechanism off here, and what we have is two pieces. We have a disc on top and the little knurled ring here that allows you to switch back and forth. 
Um, there's a post on this one and there's a corresponding hole here that fits into. And there's a post on this one. I'll show you how that works in just a minute. Okay, so we have our heart-shaped spring, our pull and our square drive. We can just dump the pull and the heart-shaped spring out. So there's that assembly. We'll pull the heart-shaped spring out. Okay. You'll notice here on the pawl that there's a little slot. That little slot faces up when you reassemble the ratchet. The other side of the pawl is just flat. Okay, so the slot part is what the heart-shaped spring goes into. Let me show you that right here. We just squeeze the wires together and insert that back into the pawl. Simple, right? Okay, here's our square drive that just comes out then inside you'll notice this is the case and you can see the hardened teeth in there okay. now all we need to do if this is dirty or greased up or something is just spray some of our electromotive on there or brake cleaner or carburetor cleaner, something that doesn't leave a residue. We'll clean this out and we'll be right back. All right, using a, a paper towel here, we went in, cleaned out our ratchet. Everything's good. The pawl's clean. Now we're gonna reassemble it. So we're gonna put the square drive back in and a little tip here now, if you notice, here's the pin that releases this head out of the torque wrench. Here's your square drive. You want to have the square drive on the same side as the pin. So when you're reassembling it, make sure the square drive goes in on the same side as the pin. All right? So now we take our pawl, we drop the pawl back in, and we make sure that it's facing up with the slot. All right? Then we take our heart-shaped spring, and we squeeze that little devil together. We're just going to slide that right into the pawl hole. Okay, all's well. Now, easy to forget this part, very important. Put some three in one in there. I do this all the time. Just put a drop of three in one oil on the pawl. That's all you need. Now we're going to reassemble the cap. So we put this post into the corresponding hole here on the knurled part. Now, this is the only sort of tricky part, is on the heart-shaped spring at the bottom of the heart, see that, how that just curves around there? We're gonna insert this post into that heart-shaped part, the bottom of the heart. So we're gonna put it in at a bit of an angle, and we're just gonna, once it's engaged, we're gonna push it over and let it settle down. So push it over and push it down till it sets. Okay? Now you're gonna have to hold it together because there's a little bit of tension on there. We're gonna put our, our new screw in with our thread lock on it. Get that started. Then we'll get our ratchet on there. Sort of tough with this tight shot. I apologize for that, but you get the idea. Now all we're doing is ratcheting this up, nice and snug. Okay, make sure the switch works. Now you can tighten this so tight that the switch won't work. You can't move the switch. And if that happens, just go back and back off about an eighth of a turn so that you have easy switching motion and we're good to go. We have our easy switching motion. We have a nice clean snap to our gears, indicating that they're clean. We've lubricated them. Back to work.